Greetings Explorers, welcome to part one um, of a look into St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis, one of the major cities in North America that I've hesitated to cover so far. If you're new here, what I like to do is focus in on a specific location and provide you with um, a lot of the visual architectural um, evidence. Uh, many of which uh, have been demolished, many ha which ha of which have not been demolished. But uh, we are zoning in on a pattern in this old world research of architectural styling um, laden with all sorts of artistic flair uh, that we don't see in the modern day. So we, we're asked the question, what, where's the disconnect? What happened? Um, what is our true history and is it has it been kept from us? So welcome to part one on St. Louis. begin with the geography. Here you can see St. Louis, Missouri right on the border of Illinois. So on the left side of the uh, of this river here we have St. Louis. And I have covered so many of these uh, cities that you see here. I haven't done Chicago. Chicago, New York I haven't really hit. Uh, they're in the same boat as St. Louis as far as uh, volume of old world architecture. So that'll be they'll both have to be a series as well. And let's look at the population demographic. We have an interesting curve going on here. You can see St. Louis peaking almost to a million here in 1950 and then crawling back down into the modern day to a similar population that they would have been supposedly around 1870, we're told. So much of the buildings we look at here are in this uh, 1890 to 1930, really, in this, uh, this time of boom for St. Louis. And for this video, I've chosen a series of buildings. Uh, we begin here with a street scene. And now is this a paving of the street or an unpaving of the street? It's a bit suspicious. To, it looks a bit suspicious to me anyway. Um, they, I think they're digging this out. But make of it what you will. Here we have August Chateau supposedly the founder of St. Louis with his cold hand. Um, some French roots coming up from Louisiana, this gentleman, we're told. Uh, you can check him out on Wikipedia if you want the Coles Notes version of history. Um, but you probably know what I think if you follow the channel. So we begin with the arena. Um, quite a magnificent structure bearing the signs of what we call Antikotech, some of us in this research. Um, some interesting flair to be sure, at the very least. Uh, demolished in 1999, you could see there. So built in 1929, you're going to see quite a few in this that are right in this late 20s period. And we have an early photograph, supposedly from right around that time uh, that it was built. And then you have to ask the question again, do these look like new builds? Does the landscaping around it look fresh? Uh, these are all questions that are worth asking. Uh, this one I really, really like. The uh, This is the Southwest, Southwestern Bell Telephone Building. I not say it here. Um, very interesting look on this structure. Here, there's a, there's a better look. Completed in 1926, and this is one of those structures, again, where they only tell us when it was completed. They don't give us a, f a start to back, uh, or front to back, as far as the uh, construction goes. Um, it would have to, had to have been a very busy, busy place in the 20s. Uh, and one of the questions I have with a lot of these uh, these photos from that time period is uh, is the technology of cameras at the time. This is just a quick look at the types of cameras that were available in that time period. Now these small portable ones becoming um, much more common in the 20s. 
but it makes me ask the question, why is it that uh, we see so few photographs from this time period? In a city that was was shooting up, we should see all sorts of uh, um, photo photographs, at least a handful of photographs of a, a, a bird's eye view of St. Louis filled with cranes and, and skeleton buildings. And you might make the argument that uh, those photos do exist, but they are not online. But I think now in the age of information, the age of Facebook and social media, a lot of people have found these old photos and put them up on their accounts. They should be readily available online. So it begs the question, how come we are not seeing more visual evidence of this time period, especially this era in, in St. Louis, this, the 20s in St. Louis, where all of these structures we're going up. It would have been something, if you owned one of these cameras at the time, you would certainly want to capture more of the process, I would think. Like a structure like this going up in the 20s is certainly something that uh, we should see more um, evidence of uh, construction. But we don't get any, or we get one or two. I don't have any of this one for you. We will see a few construction photos as we move forward. This is some of the interior of that structure. Just to give you an idea of um, the way these were finished. And again, some of these, I have nothing from the interior. I could find nothing from the interior, which is again a bit suspicious. I think this, these are things you would think. The, they're architectural marvels. They should be celebrated and featured. And I, always, I always wonder why that's the case, that we see so few um, pictures of the interiors, especially some of the ones that were demolished mid-century 60s 70s you'd think at least they would have documented um, the interior of these structures as well as the exterior before knocking them down but no they seem to be uh, covered up this is the brewery at hauser bush brewery um, mega structure mega city structure supposedly built in 1875 although the dates are a little bit hazy goes back even further you can see the size of the complex and I know that a lot of this goes underground. I have There are videos on YouTube of people exploring these structures and finding underground pools and tunnels connecting to residences nearby, things like that. And this should really give you an idea of <laughs> how big this was. And was it made for, for brewing? Was it made for beer? I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe. Maybe history is on the up and up, and what we're told is exactly what happened. Who am I to say? And a lot of it still stands. See, see what the structures look like. So you're getting 1875, you're getting buildings like this. That classic uh, um, large stone look down below. Limestone, whatever it may be. Granted, I'm not sure what that is. Um, spectacular grout outlines here everything consistent around the arch and then you get the really really tight brickwork and remember this brickwork you're looking at here is 150 years old so don't let them tell you that these buildings deteriorate in 50 or 60 years and had to be torn down you can see that these things stand the test of time I'll give you a second to uh, pick your jaw up off the floor after looking at this why so many multi-story buildings why so much, so many towers and so much tech on the tops? Questions that need to be asked, for sure. Then the spectacular eagles on the corner, the ornamentation, the art. I mentioned that in the beginning of the video. We lost something after World War II. We lost a large part of ourselves. So even if we're, we're peering into the past and looking at what I call the old world, a lot of people misconstrue that as uh, some sort of... Uh, foreign ancient uh, existence and I think what what I'm what I'm more trying to insinuate is that uh, we were much more capable and artistic people before World War II um, so much so that I think we are disconnected I think even the tech many technologies are being hidden from us from that time period as well we'll look at a couple of these buildings as we move forward this is just a sneak peek at the university, which we won't be looking at in this video. You're probably going to see at least three volumes on St. Louis, possibly more. There's just that much. And this is just a little taste of 
one of the old high schools in St. Louis, because that's how they built high schools in the 1800s. Now this is definitely one of my favorites. I, I should mention, if you're not aware, St. Louis had a World's Fair in 1904, so I won't be covering that in this video as well. Um, that in itself is, uh, is something you won't, you'll want to explore if you're interested in this uh, field of research. The World's Fair is in general, but the St. Louis World's Fair, the Louisiana Purchase, celebration of the Louisiana Purchase. Anyway, this is the, uh, the Basilica, our cathedral in St. Louis. And you see here some of the uh, interior. And I, I, I am told and I, I have read that this is all mosaic work up in the ceiling area. We'll get a closer look at that as we move forward too. But not something that, again, um, our minds and our, our eyes and our minds have to reconcile here what we're looking at. Because this is something maybe you would, you would expect to see in, I don't know, maybe... Eastern Europe, even into the Middle Eastern areas, you know, getting that Moorish feel. Take a look at the, looks like some sort of pink granite column. That's not even circular, that looks like it has fluting down the sides. That's a very unique and interesting structure there. We'll keep moving forward. A lot of eye candy on this one. Really amazing, hard to believe, the early 1900s in St. Louis, this was the type of uh, architecture they were able to produce. Remember, our history tells us that all of these new technologies are just coming into existence. The uh, motor car and the airplane, and um, you have World War I not too far around the corner. Actually, right around the time this is finished, World War I begins. So that's interesting. Here you get a, you get a look at the mosaic work. See how it's all mosaic. Amazing cathedral, certainly worth its own video. I know other um, explorers have featured this as well. This also not looking 100 and, what, 110 years old. This looks like it could easily be several hundred years old. So the weathering on the buildings is something we're going to keep an eye on as we move forward as well. Because you could compare that to a cathedral in Europe. And just to illustrate that point, this is the Reims Cathedral in France. Um, you can see you have some darkening going on here, but this is this is supposedly completed in 1275. So this is, what, a 700-year-old building? And this one's only been around for 110 years, we'll be told. And I'll stay on this a little bit longer just to give you a sense of how perfect this thing is. Also the problem with these two is we have a very very thin backstory. You think again that we would have uh, um, much more evidence and much more cataloging and praising of these structures in our history. And sometimes it's even difficult to find out who built the structure. So there you have the Basilica. Really amazing structure. Looks like it could be in Turkey. The Hagia Sophia, something like that. We'll move on now to the City Hall, the old City Hall. Here you have a timeline. Uh, ending in 1904, we'll see that with a few other structures as well. So a lot of these buildings, too, going up around the same time here in St. Louis. But again, this looking like it could be five, six hundred years old. For instance, this is the Danish castle, Kronborg castle uh, built in the 1500s we are told so 500 year old building 400 500 year old building according to history but the st louis city hall has been squeezed into a much shorter timeline for us but no less majestic i would suggest it, you, it still stands although they have made some modifications which i will show you and you can see the weathering and aging going on here on the front scorching even but uh, very very intricate and uh, highly skilled um, block work there this is the interior atrium again remember late 1800s early 1900s ready for the world's fair in 1904 they must have been in a rush to get it done over that 14 year period i suppose Spectacular structure, skylight, again, they like their skylights at that early time period as well. Another look at that. Real uh, 
eye candy involved with this one. The modern day, all, all of these have been chopped off. Towers and spires were removed in 1938. Here's what they've done with it. Uh, up to the point almost where it looks like they're ready to take this thing down. And you might have asked the question, why would they take the towers and spires down? And they'll always tell us that it's some sort of hazard for passers-by, or there was leaking going on, um, which is Im implying a faulty uh, uh, build technique. Does this look like there's any sort of uh, faultiness involved? This is perfect, perfect architecture. Even the, looking at the brickwork on the front there, you can see there's a... Uh, strange inconsistency with the uh, coloring on the brick and discoloring on the uh, the corner whether you want to call that a facade or stonework I think that's a facade over top of the brick actually and I do believe if we look closely we can see that here you can see the brickwork here but if you look closely in behind here you can actually see the rows of the brick lines behind that too so I think that was a method of reconstruction in the old world. Moving on to the civil courthouse. Now this one of those strange builds in that later time period, getting close to World War II, 1928 to 1930, so right through the crash they had to finish this thing off. Um, again I always wonder why is there are there so few uh, photos of uh, that early time period. It, it's almost like we are given uh, you know, official. Here's an official construction photo. You can see it's official up here. And it feels like everything else behind it has been hazed out, like there's no city behind it. But we're given this uh, very crisp look at a build process, very gridded looking. And you're seeing again, so they're giving it some sort of timeline for the uh, the cornerstone having been set in 1928, they're saying it happened down here, and then this is this is sort of how it uh, proceeded vertically. I almost can see a bit of a different shadow behind the uh, strings here, and there too, different color on this side than this side. But these are really the only uh, photos we're given of construction, and there's a handful of them but they all seem to be from official source. This is, again, this is strange because there's that building in behind it, unless we're looking at it from a different angle. Inconsistencies abound, and that's why we ask questions here on this channel. Um, I think this one is featured, I think, uh, Lucius Aurelian. If you haven't checked him out, check his, uh, I'll put his link in the description. Um, he featured this one, because we're looking at the footing of the gentleman here, not looking like it makes any sense um, to stabilize such a large piece of what I would say stone or concrete. Um, again, inconsistencies with the old photography and I mentioned the technology at the time, there should have been a lot more documentation of this process. So it makes you scratch your head and ask the question, how come? The Concordia Seminary? Uh, not a lot of evidence of this guy. 1883 to 1926 didn't stand very long. It's worth a mention. I wanted to throw it in the video. Amazing structure. Um, so many of these amazing structures just didn't didn't come down through time. They're almost forgotten. This is the old courthouse. I was going to say the original courthouse, but apparently that's the original courthouse. So they made some sort of giant leap from that to that at this early 1800s. Very early time period here. This one still stands and uh, you can see we have some interior shots for you. But there's quite a few structures and you'll be seeing them in this video of um, the legal aspect, the courts. We saw the civil courts building going up in the 20s we're told and now we're looking at this one. There, there actually will be at least one more, two more actually, two more having to do with uh, laws and I have dug into a little bit um, the history of the legal system. Um, some people, some good research out, researchers out there have uh, have uh, illustrated that we are under maritime law as a society. Uh, that happening apparently in the 
1860, somewhere around then, we're switching over to maritime law. So the whole legal system gets co-opted or gets transformed and uh, is works to the benefit of the those that, uh, let's say, run society. It gets into the whole robber baron thing and the financial system. It's a very deep rabbit hole, but uh, there's something interesting about the whole legal aspect of it. And the courthouses, the American courthouses are spectacular. I could easily do... Um, multiple videos on those. I think I have promised to do videos on uh, by state, courthouses by state, so that's something you may see um, in the coming months as well. Here this is the uh, Four Courts building, the old Four Courts building. You see it didn't stand, stood for 57 years, they'll tell us. You can see here as well the the tower portion looks like it's been ripped off, literally. There's the tower portion that they got rid of and literally looking like it's been ripped off the Four Courts building. And you're going to see that story repeat itself here. We're looking at the Holland building. It's this one here. With the very interesting looking little central tower now looking like it certainly could be a docking station for some sort of air travel, travel, uh, blimp type travel. Dirigible, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I think that is being um, put under the spotlight these days as well that we had other modes of transportation that have been all but hidden from us. The whole Hindenburg disaster being that uh, the PSYOP to uh, eliminate this mode of travel is what it seems like. Demolished in 1973, built in that same time period that we were seeing uh, the city hall go up. So again, a period of time where there would have been a massive amount of construction all over the city. Here we have a later look at the Holland building. You can see the tower has been taken off. Not really looking like the spectacular structure that it once was. Very interesting, interesting uh, building. Especially this. Again, why would you make this so ornamental up here um, when you're not really going to see it from down here? So that highlight of the uh, upper portions of these old structures um, really has to make you wonder about air travel at the time. Now the Jefferson Hotel, which is two parts here. You can see this part here on the right, um, the first portion, and this was supposedly added on later. Uh, opened in 1904, again the same year the uh, City Hall was completed, the same year that the World's Fair is going on. So these structures are all being finished off during a time when we are told th most of the temporary structures of the World's Fair were also being constructed. You really have to ask the question how many skilled um, trades workers were there in St. Louis at the time and does the volume of uh, architecture going up um, fit the amount of people that were skilled in these uh, in these trades to construct these buildings. They're saying this one was built for, they don't give us actually a beginning build date, but they give us the end date. And I have some postcards and that's all I could really find for some of the old um, interior look. You can see though the way how ornamental everything was even in the postcard. They're showing us just the grill and coffee shop that one. We have the Louis XIV Salon, of course. Why wouldn't you have a Louis XIV Salon in St. Louis for the World's Fair? You have to match the magnificent architecture that they threw up temporarily during the World's Fair. And there you have a look at the building before the annex is built, we're told. Again, hard to trust old photos, so who knows what to make of it. I love the circular porthole style windows up top. Very interesting looking structure. The lobby having spectacular looking like marble columns with sort of gilded capitals. Amazing coffered ceilings. Really magnificent. We have marble even on the underside of the, um, the stairs. I mean, what else can I say, guys? Do we do? Do we build like this today? Could we? Um, and we could, I think. But, uh, it's not in the budget, really, for anyone. The green marble room. You can see green marble. 
Really spectacular. The Jefferson, Hotel Jefferson, built for the World's Fair. At the same time, the city hall is being built. And, and several other structures we're featuring in this video. All right, this is a grainy photo. I apologize for that. This is the St. Vincent Asylum, one of two asylums in St. Louis. And they do tell us that this one was built in the 1890s, later than this one, the insane asylum. Um, supposedly built in 1869. Take a look at that. 1869. Remember, we have the breweries. We have the courthouse. So we have... <laughs> certainly not... Uh, the architecture certainly not looking and feeling like what we think of for that period of time. So two asylums. This is the interior of that second one in the modern day. Looking like it's close to being ready to... Again, to be torn down really a massive structure and they could have called this a university complex but no it was an insane asylum again you have to ask the question uh, with all these asylums why were there so many insane people couldn't have been that insane if they're building structures like this there had to be some level of sanity <laughs> no it's a strange narrative there you have the fountain too out front which I don't think be I think it's gone at this period of time uh, a lot of people have uh, done research on the fountains as well, how the water system had to do with the cooling and grounding of the energy running through the buildings that were using the old um, technology. And I'll just roll through these ones as well, or this one. Let's jump to that. And I'm going to hesitate just to say the word, because I think there is a bit of a... Uh, censorship going on with that word so I'm just gonna leave that alone um, you see it's being built in the 20s though and looking very similar to the civil courts building in style but again something we should see more documentation as far as the um, the build process goes here have the Griffin strange looking creatures looking like with, with, a, with a human head on these ones McGriffin's definitely uh, tying in with what, uh, what a lot of people will call Tartaria, or the Old World, the symbol of the Old World. There it is in the modern day. And then looking like this must be copper. You can see the copper leaching out of these different areas. Very strangely built structure. Strangely shaped structure. Quick mention of the old McLean building. This one didn't didn't come down through time. Uh, I'm not sure exactly on the build date or the demolition date. Let's see again, we have a decapitation going on. Cupola. Maybe you're going to house house a. Maybe it's a docking station for air travel, and you can get in through there. But evidence of that has been erased at this period of time. So that's a consistent theme that we're seeing with a lot of this. And if you thought they were busy enough in the 20s, think again. We have the Missouri Pacific building going up. 1926 to 1928, two-year build. Looking a lot like that South Southwestern Bell telephone building. The Missouri Pacific Railway Company. And I do have a few. It is still standing. I do have a few shots of... Uh, the exterior and if you don't see uh, interiors for these structures it's not because I didn't look it's because I couldn't find any uh, and this one uh, being another one of those buildings where I could not find anything from the interior but you can look here at the detail again 18 or 1926 to 28 and this is the type of work that's going on so what have we lost if it if that's a legitimate timeline and that's actually happening what did we lose and when did we lose it? I am really, really starting to lean on World War II as being a massive trigger event for the wiping and resetting of our consciousness. There's another really spectacular look at the ceiling tiles. Who goes to this much trouble now to do ceiling area like that? Beautiful, isn't it? 
It's it really comes from a different consciousness, a different way of thinking. To even have that enter your mind as a possibility. Missouri Pacific. There's the eagle again. Quick look at the Municipal Courts building. We're going to see the same theme to repeat itself. This built in 1911. I don't know what that means. Does that mean it's a one-year build or is that when it was finished? A little more information would be nice. So here is apparently a construction photo from 1910. So there we know that 1910 we're at this stage of the game. We have nothing from the interior of the structure. Apparently this one is on the way out in St. Louis as well see the fence around it looking like it's abandoned I'm not exactly sure what the status is of this structure but I can show you that it did once have a tower a central tower and of course long gone again you have to ask the question why the central tower again could you dock could you come in here could you make your way down something to think about all options are on the table, I think. 1884. <laughs> They're building structures like this. Well, they had all that practice with breweries and courthouses and asylums. Why not? The old post office. Still stands as well. You want to see the theme repeat itself again? There. Here's how it looks in the modern day. Decapitated. And that's where it once looked, where they take the cupola off. Are you sensing the theme, folks? You also have lower entry areas here. You can see all along the outside. They've got a little fence there, and it goes down below. Certainly would be a very strange way of um, construction method, let's say. Um, oh, you can see it here as well. So you have to ask the question about uh, the height of the ground gets into the whole mud flood thing. Something to think about anyway. The old post office. Alright, we're coming to the end here. We have a few more structures to take a look at. This is the Union Station. Opened in 1894, very early time period. They were really good at building castles, apparently, in St. Louis. But if you didn't know, now you know. The Union Station. Still stands, a magnificent structure. Would love to get there and check that thing out one of these days. This is a fantastic photograph as well. Here, actually, this is giving you a really nice look at. Because where would you, when do you think this photograph was taken? I don't have a date on it, but if you were to guess, it's got to be early 1900s. There's your horse and buggy there. But take a look at the streetcars. How old do these things look? Like this is a technology in its infancy at that time. And how old do these things look? These things look like they've been running for some time, as far as I'm concerned. It, look, it actually looks like the streets are all made for for this mode of transportation. And we're being told, our history is telling us that this mode of transportation is new at that period of time. Look at the brickwork. They've even worked the brickwork around all the um, rail tracks. And all looking very old. This is looking like it could easily be over 100 years old. This section gets the looks like it gets a herringbone detail, maybe, or just a diagonal. Spectacular photo. Let's get back to the Union Station. Got sidetracked there. Really, really amazing. Is this the type of thing? Look how big the stonework is here, too. Let's see if I can get you a better look at that. Uh, this is how it stands in the modern day. Some of the interior for you I have as well. An old look at the interior. I really love this atrium area. Really amazing. And in color. And now if we look closely. Now does this look textured to you? Like embossed? All of this looks textured to me. And maybe this part not, but this part for sure. So this, the intricate detailing there is just, you know, it's certainly not something we're familiar with in the modern day. It's certainly something worth celebrating. 
This is an amazing, amazing place. And even look how they did the stonework here. You have a, a layer of smooth stone and a thin layer of rough, smooth rough. Amazing, amazing detail. The Union Station, St. Louis, Missouri. And we come to the Union Trust Building. Here it says Missouri Trust and Chemical Buildings. Um, also named the Union Trust Building. Designed by Louis Henry Sullivan. Here we have Louis Sullivan. You can see they say him, they call him the father of the modern skyscraper. He's a mentor to Frank Lloyd Wright. So if you're familiar with architecture and some of the big names in American architecture, these are these are the giants, right? Um, yeah. So you can get here. He's, he goes to study the Ecole Bo de Beaux Arts, of course, right? And has a huge hand apparently in um, rebuilding Chicago after the Great Fire. If you're not familiar with any of these of these events, these are things that are essential to dig into. And this, not for this video, it's just too much. But this period of time, the Great Fires, the World's Fairs. Um, this is something that we really need to zone in on and uh, and uncover the truth about our history. Anyway, I'll try not to get sidetracked with uh, with architects. Let's just look at the building. Um, here we have a decent view of the front, and there's going to be a a change here as well. You can see. Oh, this isn't a great photo. Let's take a look. Move in a little. You can see the ornamental lions and the circular windows down here. Can you see that? Really, really unique. Very interesting um, part of the architecture. And here's how it stands in the modern day. And you, you can see what's going on here. Where they've really made this plain. So let's go back to what it once looked like. This is a better, better photograph to give you an idea. Like, imagine walking down the street and seeing these majestic lions poking out from this building. Amazing entrance, amazing grounded entrance. I don't know, there's something about You see how small this person is? How big is that? That's got to be 20 feet, at least, if not more. And now you have this. So, it, there's, a, there's a theme going on in this video. 1892, this one was built, we are told. Early time period, very early. There's the post office next door. And this thing's still standing like I showed you. And the upper portions have not been altered like the bottom. So you still have this amazing, amazing looking terracotta style mixed in with the brickwork. Reminding me of the guarantee or Prudential building in Buffalo. I think it goes by both names. I did do a video on that too. Maybe I'll put the link in the description. But uh, here we have the interior. Nice that we can get on in the interior of this one. Beautiful stained glass atrium area. Beautiful. You have these. Are these lions as well? What do you think? What are we looking at here? adorning all around the top of the building. Just spectacular. This is interesting too. I don't know if this is just the way these have cracked or this is how they were set. Very strange. Not as uniform as say this one. That one really caught my eye. But take a look at that cornice detail. <laughs> wow, there's a tile. There's another row of tiles. Another one there. I'm sorry, but uh, this, that's like the most difficult part of a building to, to detail and the most irrelevant as far as uh, in the modern day we can just keep a clean line uh, cheap materials finish that area off make sure it's weatherproof and move on but not in the 1890s not in st. Louis and not really anywhere as we've seen so this is the last building in this first edition this first volume of a, a close look at St. Louis, Old World St. Louis. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, make sure you uh, put any comments or anything. If you have any interest in the area, um, um, throw the 
throw that in the comment section. And if you have uh, any boots on the ground, if you're from the area, um, don't hesitate to email me. My email address is in the about section on the uh, page. So thanks for joining me.